Good afternoon, it is Friday, May 12th, and this is my second drive that I'm gonna record with FSD Beta 11.4.1. So I'm in a bit of a time crunch here, so I'm just gonna get on the road here and let's get started. So I've done two drives before this, one last night that I posted earlier today. Uh, that was a good good drive. First drive was a zero disengagement drive, which is pretty cool. Uh, my second drive I didn't record. Um, unfortunately, due to road construction, I had to drive manually through a section of it because of the detours and whatnot. But uh, you know, for the parts where I did have an FSD beta engaged, it, it's been pretty good. I noticed a little bit of uh, choppy behavior when it came to vehicles cutting in front of me on the highway. So we'll keep an eye out for that on this, this drive home here. Um, but yeah. You know, overall, this build gives me a lot of vibes that re remind me of 11.3.1, which was honestly my favorite 11.3 build. Um, it was super confident, uh, especially when it came to turns. Uh, throttle control was really good, so, um, but improvement so far that I've recognized, the car does a much better job of um, adhering to residential speed limits, which is usually 20 miles per hour. Um, Previously, the car had some old map, map data that would, you know, basically re result in it trying to do 30 miles an hour, like especially in my neighborhood, um, which would always be an intervention every single time I engage FSD from a residential neighborhood in the Twin Cities. So that issue, at least in my neighborhood, it looks like they may have updated the maps finally, but I've noticed in other parts of town, it does try to limit the speed and there is a message on the top of the screen that indicates that it's doing exactly that. So. Um, Really good stuff there. I know that it that feature is new in 11.4, so I'm looking forward to seeing that improve further, but so far that's gonna make some pretty good um, changes in terms of just less interventions and you know overall a much better experience for me, the driver, so. Um, but anyways, uh, we so far have had a pretty good drive so far here. Obviously we just got started, but um, we're coming up to a previous problem area for us with 11.3. So we are in the right lane now. If I show you the map data here, we're gonna end up taking a left on the 5th Street West to get us on a 94 West. So we need to make sure we need to move over one more lane to the left. Now we have 0.3 miles to do it. The car definitely needs to get over at some point um, here in probably the next, you know, eighth mile or so. But, uh, and it looks like it's starting to slightly rain, but I don't anticipate that to cause really any issues for us, so. So one of the new things that's been mentioned in 11.4 and 11.4.1, there is a lane hints feature they've added now where the car knows that it needs to get over to the left, so it takes hints from that upcoming navigation to pick the lanes. So it looks like it's trying to get into the fa faster lane there. I really wish it would have not done that. I'm gonna try to see if I can get it back over to the right. Yeah, it's, it's not gonna make the lane change. I'm just gonna cancel that. So we'll have to come back and do this drive again. I'll post a video of just this section then, but it would previously miss this left turn here. So, and again, it looks like that confusion there is still there. Honestly, the better lane to pick is the left lane, uh, in my opinion, but, um, both turn left here. I am going to report that because it it seems like when there are still two turn lanes, the car does kind of hesitate on picking. It just needs to pick with one and go with it. So that continues to kind of be um, something that needs to be improved further down the road. And let's see what it does in terms of lane selection here. The lane marking line is kind of blurred. Now we did have a car to follow. You can kind of tell the wheel turned to the left a little bit like it was going to go into the other lane, but it did stay to the right. So it did do the right thing, which is great. Um, well, again, we'll come back and we'll do that same section here a couple times next week and see what the results are. And I'm just gonna bump the speed up because people do like to go a little faster as we get on 94 here, but. So no real regressions there. Pretty consistent behavior with what we previously saw with 11.4. I would have liked to know what it would have done if it would have moved over or not so like i said I'll, I'll do that section two more times and then i'll post a video up later this week about the results there okay this is new behavior now the car in 11.3 did a great job of staying to the yellow line and now it's kind of swooping out to the right so i am going to report that Honestly, the behavior back there with 11.3 was perfect. So it seems like a slight regression in terms of line selection there, but 
you know, another area to test when I redo this route here later next week. Interesting lane select or lane move there. You can see that it's changing lanes to stay out of the rightmost lane. I saw that a few times 11.3. I didn't see it a ton, so I'll be kind of curious if I see that more in 11.4. So we are now exiting uh, I-94 West onto MN-280 North. It still seems to be lining itself to the left uh, on this on-ramp. So that's good on this one. So no regressions there. And I saw the same behavior last night when I was uh, doing my first impressions drive. So. And then again, you'll just kind of see a current state of the merge behavior on the highway here. Um, we are clear to our right, but the car does not signal still. As you can see, there's no signal engaged. And then, you know, we're just essentially following the merge line. So for traffic like this, that's fine. Obviously, if there's more traffic, it makes it a little bit more difficult to find a place to merge. So I expect that behavior to improve, hopefully in 11.5 or 11.6. A little bit of braking there. It always has a tough time seeing these lights, so not really a regression. Um, I honestly prefer to slow down if it's unsure if it needs to stop. It's one of those intersections I really wish they would just get rid of the left turn altogether, but <laughs> they uh, they think otherwise. So um, in the meantime, I really wish they'd put like some bigger bigger lights. It is hard to see this even as a human driver as you come around that corner back there. All right, so we're gonna be getting on I-35W North here. We're gonna to have to get over to our right, so we either need to get in front of this car or behind it. I'm gonna let the car do what it needs to do here, and it's gonna to need to either figure it out quickly here, so. Now we're making this guy speed up, so he's probably wondering what the heck I'm doing. But you can see the merge behavior still kind of where it, it lacks a little bit. So um, if the car was able to see it, you know, a little further out, I don't know if it's just, it can see and it's just not making the decisions like that faster or sooner, but um, we're just not planning ahead enough there. So, you know, a human driver would be able to look ahead and see that the person was going to be, you know, in our lane. And then from there, you know, slow down or speed up. And the right move there would have been to slow down. Since our, our lane is the one that's ending there. So, um, the car could read signs, you know, like all the signs. We could have read that sign, knew the lane was going to merge even without having to see further ahead, and then slow down, right? But the car also does have course map data to actually, you know, use. I know they're trying to make the system less dependent on it, but it is a tool which I think in situations like that we could use in the time being until, you know, additional ability to read signs and whatnot comes into the fold, so. Um, you know, if that person hadn't sped up, that would have probably been a disengagement. I would have hit the brakes. Um, so, not, again, great behavior, but just kind of a state of the state here. So there's the first sign I've seen of the lane hints there, choosing right fork to stay on route. That was pretty cool. I have not seen that message before, so that's something definitely new in 1141 there. 
I was hoping to see that message when we were in downtown St. Paul. So next time we get over, go down there, I'm going to see if I see that message when it gets over to the left, hopefully, um, and fixes our issue that we had with 11.3 in terms of following the route. A little bit of hesitation for that pedestrian there. That was the right move. I didn't know if she was going to go or not. So um, she eventually stopped there. The car proceeded very quickly. So decision making latency with, with regards to pedestrians seems to be a bit better in this release. Definitely something I'll keep an eye on as we go along here. And then coming up here, we do have a little bit of a wrench in the works here because of some construction that's going on. So. Uh, it is construction season now in Minnesota, so I'm sure most of my regular routes are going to have some form of it. Um, we're just going to have to, you know, deal with that as we as we can here. So um, the car is getting over to the right lane, and as I mentioned, we're kind of put ourselves in a position now where we're now going to have to get over to the left. Um, I'm going to let it do its thing here. If it waits too long, I will step in and just take over and put us over where we need to be here. So. And again, I don't know if the car could see the road cones or not, but it's one of those things that I would have to go back and watch the video to see if it could see it, if it could make a better decision like that. Part of this is we don't have to get over to the right lane for about another mile, so we're doing this kind of prematurely anyways. So if the car waited a little bit longer, I'm in, I am in, uh, in assertive, so it should wait a little bit longer, but let's see if somebody's nice enough to let us in here. Otherwise, I will be taking over here. Yeah, I'm just giving it a nudge here. It, it was going to hesitate a little too much there. Um, and it figured it out. But again, we could have probably made that light had it had it not made that lane choice there. So this is a throttle intervention. But again, one of those things that could be could have been avoided had we made some better planning a little sooner. And the car did lurch there. Yeah, let's try to go through a red light here. Not sure what's going on there, but it could be the LED lights there. Car tried to proceed on red. You can see the light flashing there a little bit. So it seems to still have an issue of detecting the um, LED based traffic lights, which are pretty common, honestly, nowadays. So um, I'm not sure what can be done there. I'll re-engage it here and see if it goes again. Yeah, now it's staying put, so. That's been an issue for a while now, so I'm not, that's nothing new. Um, it's the first time I've seen it at this light, but you know, light conditions and things like that obviously play a factor, so. We did kind of hold up for that person that kind of cut in front of us there. Um, we probably didn't need to slow down that much, in my opinion, but better safe than sorry when they just dart out in front of us. And we do have a little break in the road construction, but it does pick up again, uh, maybe a quarter mile. So if the car tries to get over before that ends, I will, or before it starts here, I'll just keep it in the left lane. Just kill that there. So the car slowed down quite a bit. As you can see there, I just nudged the throttle. Does it seem like I, it didn't like my my intervention there? Um, but yeah, now it, now you can see why I did that. You know, we have all these cones that basically take off this right lane. Good job getting over after the construction there. Um, again, I kind of would have wish it would have seen the cones a little further ahead to make the better decision ahead of time, but it's kind of where we're at right now. I'm sure that will improve kind of in the coming builds. So, this car in front of us here is further proof that. Merging is hard behavior, whether you're a computer or you're a human being. It's just something we all struggle with still, so.
Good job, nicely slowing to a stop since we have oncoming traffic in front of us. This car is turning, so I'm gonna wait to see if it goes here. And now it looks like we're just gonna stay put. So we're out sticking out a little far, but we're not, you know, we're not in the other lane. If there was pedestrians nearby, I would have disengaged and reversed back, but I think we'll be fine here. All right, we have a green arrow and we are moving. Awesome. A little bit of a swerve to the right there. I'm not sure what it's off. It was that boat that threw it off or what, but. And then we are still using the shoulder to make our right turn, which is great behavior. I'm glad that didn't go anywhere. All right, and then I'm gonna kill the nav. All right, so now we're gonna proceed straight. And again, another residential road here near my na my neighborhood. Um, we're about like a mile away from my house. But you can see here, the speed limit now reflects the accurate speed limit of 20 miles per hour, uh, which is fantastic. I have been talking about that issue for so long. I mentioned this in my last video. Uh, it always resulted in numerous interventions when I was going through these neighborhood roads. So I'm really glad that issue was fixed. Good job with that stop behavior there. I used to think that it was stopping too far past, but it's doing that, it looks like, to get a better view of the intersection. So um, I, I'm honestly not opposed to that behavior. It definitely makes the uh, interactions a little faster. And then same with this one here. It looks like it's getting a better view of it. So Good stuff there. Uh, that street to our left, unfor or, you know, fortunately has a stop too, so I don't know if it's completely necessary to do that. Since that. If there was a car there, you would definitely see it in the intersection, but, you know, regardless, I'm fine with that. All right, so we have a right turn and then a, a left turn up ahead here, both of which are unprotected. So we will get a good taste of that here. And what the car used to do, it used to make this right turn. It would speed up once we got on Johnson Street, slow down, and then it would, once it made a left turn on my residential neighborhood street of uh, 36th Avenue, it would then speed up again to like 30 miles per hour. So based on my drive last night, that behavior is fixed now. So, all right, good job there, very smooth. And this is where I used to speed up a lot before. And now, because the speed limit's fixed, it doesn't do that. So, it's honestly really good behavior there. So again, I, I saved myself, this, this fix here and just the map date alone saved me probably five or six interventions um, per drive. So again, kudos to the autopilot team for fixing that one. I know I've complained about it a lot. Um, I appreciate all the work you guys do with these builds. I know it's no small feat, so thank you. Very confident behavior there. During the daytime, I think that's the, that's the least amount I've seen ever seen it pause there before. So keep, keep an eye out for that on future drives, but that intersection there is that's probably the best it's ever done. Still a little bit of wheel jerk and turning left onto Fillmore Street here, but all right, so I'm home now. So, you know, in conclusion, they had the one disengagement due to the traffic light detection. I'm not sure how that one can be addressed in the future, but that was one area where we definitely had to disengage. We may have had another disengagement uh, had we um, had that person not sped up as we were merging on I-35W. But overall, I think good stuff so far with 1141 compared to 1136. In my opinion, this build is far superior in pretty much every way. I haven't really seen any real regressions minus that um, merging on I-94 West where the car um, wanted to align itself to the right. That's the only real regression I saw on that drive. So anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.